For a long time, the 2011 was an unreachable dream gun, especially in recent years when the cost had absolutely jumped up past $2,000 for a gun with an optic. Springfield Armory, known for making solid 1911s at fair prices, has now cracked the code with their Prodigy, bringing what was unreachable to a price point many can jump into. Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel, the only gun channel on YouTube absolutely excreting BDE. That's right, Big Dad Energy. I don't have much time to make this video because my wife tells me we have to go somewhere, which means I only have about 45 minutes before we're an hour late. But I'm David, and this is the Springfield Armory Prodigy. The Prodigy is a double stack 1911, which is colloquially referred to as a 2011. And I'm gonna probably say 2011 a million times, but this is not a staccato, so I don't think this is a staccato. So I normally like to keep you guys in suspense, like, oh, how, what does he think about the gun? And I still have all my negatives at the end of the video, and there are some negatives with this pistol but I'm pretty damn excited about this pistol. And for me to use a four letter word, that means I'm really excited. I'm not Coley and Noir making inappropriate sex references levels of excitement, but I'm pretty excited. And though the grip looks as soft as cashmere, functionally, it grips like that one girl you know who's obsessed with doing Colian, dude, that was cringy and you know it was. So the gun is really, really great to shoot and we'll talk about that. But first, I'm kind of curious as to how they got to the price point that they're at. So Springfield didn't tell me all this and it's 100% conjecture, but I'm happy to walk through the gun and kind of tell you how I think they were able to get the cost down on it. So first things first, Springfield understood what was bringing the value to the customer. A fair price was probably number one and behind that is a tight feeling, a high quality type gun. So the slide to frame fit and the barrel to slide fit is very good. But you can immediately look at the bottom of the grip and see there is no aluminum mag well, that which is pretty typical for these style of guns. Moving up, you can see that the slide is very plain Jane. It has a very minimalist aesthetic. There's not a bunch of roll marks. There's not a lot of like pictures molded into the grip. I kind of like the understated look, but if it's less ornate, it costs less money to set up tooling. There's less machine time cutting the slide. Next is the fit. When you pull the trigger on the gun, while the trigger is very good, you can tell it's made with MIM internals, which is pretty typical for kind of the budget line of the Springfield Armory 1911s. So that is here as well. And the fit of the ambi safety, there is a bit of wiggle when the safety is deactivated. When you press down on it, it kind of wiggles. Higher end guns don't typically do that. When I run the slide to the rear, the disconnector geometry, and if you don't know what a disconnector is, if you look down in the port with the slide all the way at the rear of the stroke, that little bump sticking up is the disconnector. It's geometry is a little weird where it creates kind of a weird hitch at the back of the slide stroke. And when I first got the gun, it would actually hold open if I slowly took the pressure off because of the shape of the disconnector. Put a dab of oil on it, it's not a problem. So at this point, a lot of you guys are like, boy, I bet you're really fun at parties. I am, but that's not why you said that. Then there's probably more of you who are like, man, that's a handsome beard, and thank you. Probably all the rest of you are like, well, does that keep you from wanting to get into this gun? Does any of that hold you back? Are you concerned about any of that stuff? And no, honestly, they got everything right about the gun as far as what's important on this style of gun. It's just a very minimalist, it's all killer, no filler as far as how they put the thing together. So let's talk about what they left in the gun as a result of kind of reaching for that price point. So starting at the bottom, you'll notice if I hand it to you, it's got a polymer grip. The grip is kind of wide, kind of big. People with small hands, including my wife, said she had a hard time reaching the trigger on the gun. But I kind of like how it fills up the palm of my hand and I have plenty of real estate to build a grip. You'll notice immediately that the sculpt under the trigger guard is absolutely perfect and there is a bit of a double undercut to build a good grip. I wish the hook was a little bit more pronounced at the front, but all in all, quite good. Moving up to the manual safety, the actual activation of on and off for the safety is super duper positive. It feels really good, makes that satisfying snick sound when you turn the thing on and off. See? I'll do it into the microphone for all you ASMR types. Oh yeah. The way that the frame is cut, the slide stop is countersunk into the frame, which is a high-end feature and I really kind of like it. The, the slide stop doesn't 
allow you to push it up very easily, but it is a bit easier to sweep down. That said, I have no prayer of being able to reach the slide stop with my firing hand thumb, so this is gonna be a support hand drop all day long. The serrations on the slide are absolutely brilliant. Whether you're a front Kurt serrations guy or a rear serrations guy, they've got you covered. The design of these cuts is very, very good and very, very usable. The iron sights are basically perfect, and at this point, boys, we're elevating it from the subjective to the objective. It is objectively true that a fiber front with a blacked out target rear is the best set of iron sights that you can get. It's science, you can't argue with it. No, seriously, you can't. Three dots are silly. The sight comes with an optic plate that you see is mounted on the gun and it comes with a sight plate if you don't want an optic and the sight is very good. Both sets are very good. They're very reminiscent of Dawson Precision. I wouldn't be surprised if they were Dawson Precision sights. They're very well machined. And then there is the optic plate and optic system. Boys, this is one of the very best optic systems on the market. It is the agency optic system, the AOS. And the way that works, and a lot of the influencers, you've probably watched videos on this gun already, already came with the Hex Dragonfly sight mounted. I actually had to mount mine. This is my Hex Dragonfly sight that I actually already have. Had, so it only felt appropriate to put it on the gun. But the way that it works is there's a little bit of a dovetail at the rear of the slide that the plate hooks down into and then fits very, very tight into the side. Like the plate is super duper tightly fit to the pocket cut. So the dovetail at the rear of the slide is resisting the energy is moving to the rear. So it's not just being put onto the screws. And because the plate has to be forced down into the plate, there's not a lot of force when the slide comes forward either. So the plate is absolutely taking all the energy without kind of that air gap that we worry about is what shears screws. So the agency cut is really well done. And so let's talk about the trigger. For those of you who don't follow the channel, and you should, I am a competitive shooter. I shoot 2011 race guns in competition, and my race gun is set up with a pound and a half trigger. There's very little pre-travel. There is a super clean wall and very little over-travel. It is the ultimate for what a trigger could be. This gun is just good in comparison to that. Although if you compare this trigger to any other gun on the market, you'd be like, this trigger is amazing. And it is. It is about four and a half pounds in the model that I have. And I will show you what the trigger pull actually looks like. So just a little bit of pressure and we're on a false wall. We press through a little bit of mush and we're on to the actual wall, four and a half pounds. And then there's just a tiny bit of over travel. Reset is a little bit long for a 19-2011 type trigger, but not too bad, but it's a super, super shootable trigger. The trigger shoe on the gun is a curved trigger face. It's made out of polymer and not aluminum because it is a price point type feature, but it really isn't that bad. In fact, I didn't mind it at all being polymer. If you were to inspect the magazines that come with it, they're made by Duramag. They have a black finish on them. There is a 17 and 20 rounder. They are pretty darn nice. The follower is very, very well designed. The gauge of the metal feels like it's pretty stout. It seems like it would be a really good magazine up to maybe the competition 2011 style magazine. The mag price is worth talking about. They're gonna be sold for $60. And those of you who don't shoot 2011, 11s already are like, wow, that's a lot of money for mags. And those of you who do shoot 2011s like, wow, that's a really good deal on mags. Like that's a very good price. It's like two thirds the price of what these things are typically going for on other guns. And to that point, it does take 2011 magazines and it does fit 2011 holsters. I used my Bull Armory TAC 425 holster for it and it fits just fine. And I also tested my outside the waistband holster for a 2011 grip module and it fits just fine. But now's the part where you get excited because then there is shooting the gun. So typically with a 2011 type commander, they have what's called a cone barrel, meaning like if I point this at you, there's that big fat honking barrel right there. And what that does is it, you know, mates up with the slide and that's how it locks in place so you don't have to use a bushing. But generally it comes to a taper at back at the chamber and it loses all that weight kind of in the middle. This is a heavy bull barrel, which means the profile you get at the slide is the same profile when it comes all the way back to the chamber. The upper end of this commander weighs about an ounce more than the other 2011 commanders that I've tried. So when I hand the gun to you, you're gonna be like, wow, that thing is really muzzle heavy. And it is. And generally I like guns that are more balanced with the weight back over the trigger guard. And so I first, I thought I didn't like this balance until I shot it. The heavy muzzle of the gun actually basically mutes recoil. I don't wanna use the cliche of it feels like a 22 cause it doesn't, it feels somewhere between that and a nine millimeter, just something less than a nine. If you take 115 target loads that are, you know, a little bit more mild, then this thing feels absolutely ridiculous. But where it really came alive and I started to fall in love with the thing is 
when I shot heavier loads. So defensive loads and NATO spec loads work the slide, but the return to zero is so good on the way the grip is shaped and how the texture bites in my hand. It was just a damn bullet hose, man. This thing is amazing. Defensive ammo, let's see how the sucker handles it. I suspect it's gonna be just fine. Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah. In fact, it runs hotter ammo better. Like the slide return is faster. I don't feel like I'm waiting on it to come back into battery. Like rain flows. Couple that with a very predictable four and a half pound trigger and even headshot work at 20 yards wasn't that big a problem. And to that point on accuracy, I bench rested the gun, which I hate doing because it's boring and I hate it, but I did it because you guys tell me I have to. So I, I bench rested it and I tried seven different types of ammo to see how it would print. And oddly enough, this is the five shot group at 20 yards I was able to get with Tula. So the accuracy out of the gun is pretty darn good. It's a really fun gun to shoot to the point where I actually loaded it up with hollow points and started carrying it because it does have a Cerakote finish and not like a high speed finish on the slide like a DLC or a PVD or anything like that. So I wanted to see if the Cerakote's gonna wear out, so I'm gonna try and carry it. And because the muzzle is so heavy on the gun, it actually is really stable in like a inside the waistband type holster. I don't know if the five inch is easier to shoot. I may find out, but this four and a quarter inch is really fun to shoot. Now moving on to the negatives. But before we get going with that, if you want to see a video comparing the Prodigy Commander to the Bull Armory TAC Commander to the Staccato P, I need you to like the video. At 5,000 likes, I will make a video comparing those three guns. And while you're at it, you may as well subscribe so you know when that video comes out. And the negatives on this gun are really, well, one of them I kind of don't like a lot, but other than that, all the negatives I don't really care about because the gun it, it majors on the majors and does so much right that the minors are just very small gripes. So the first and foremost, the smallest gripe that I have is because there is no mag well, the where the gun lands on my palm, it kind of agitates it until I just kind of rub some dirt on it and got over it. The fit of the safety and the trigger, I do wish was a little bit more precise because the gun feels like a higher end gun. It'd be nice if it kind of went the extra mile, but at the same time, the price point on this gun that I paid for it, like my wallet's happy that it's not. I'm totally fine with the way the safeties and the trigger are. I wouldn't bother messing with it. The Springfield Standard Footprint Optic Plate that came on the pistol, I would prefer a RMR or a Delta Point Pro or a not Vortex Viper footprint. But I also understand that they're trying to sell some optics and we'll see in October whenever the plates come out how the gun does with other sights on it. And to that point about sights, this is the single biggest gripe that I have. I have this on mini guns, not just this gun. There is a witness hole cut in the top of the chamber and gas comes out of that. And since the Remington that I was shooting most of the rounds with today, the Remington fogged the glass of this optic something fierce after about 300 rounds. I don't know if you can tell, but after about 250 rounds or so, it is smoking the glass, shooting into a light source on the window basically occludes the sight. I was shooting into the sun when I filmed the footage you're seeing on the screen now and the optics lens was basically occluded between the glare from the sun on the carbon that was caked on the window of the optic. So I really, really hope Springfield, you see this video and you take it to heart and you just don't put a witness chamber in there. You gave us these amazing, amazing slide serrations. Just let us press check. Don't make us do like the visual verification because I mean that little witness hole is terrible anyway. But that's really it. To have a gun that is this good at a price that is comparatively so good is awesome. Like it, it's a really good gun. And no, they didn't send me this gun so I could say it. I spent my own money on this gun and here I am telling you, it's a really good gun. Brand new guys who've never shot 2011s before are gonna pick it up and they're gonna hold it, they're gonna shoot it and they're gonna be like, this is the absolute best gun ever. And the guys who were experienced with 2011s, you're gonna hand it to them, they're gonna shoot it and handle it and they're gonna think, okay, this gun's pretty solid. <laughs> It's a good gun, I'm like straight up, it's a good gun. I'm really excited to see Springfield is listening to its customers. It's a solid gun. I hope they made enough of them because I think they're gonna sell a ton of them. So if you've got any questions, sound off in the comments, let me know. Otherwise, I'll catch you on the next one. I appreciate you guys and I'll see you on the next one.